What's up YouTube? Let's check out some must-have extensions in Stable Diffusion for utility and how to improve your quality of life. This video is a bit longer than expected, but I'm giving a brief intro of the tool, then showing you what it does, and then showing you how to install it. As always, all the links you need will be in the video description, and feel free to use the chapters to jump around. Let's get started with our first tool. Yo! The first one is Image Browser, and this one is a definitely must have. Have you ever wanted a personal library like Midjourney or Playground AI or even Leonardo AI? Well, that's basically what this does, and it does even more than that. Every time I use this extension, I keep thinking to myself, how convenient is this? And I wish that Automatic 11.11 just had this by default. Once you install it, you'll have a tab called Image Browser. You go in here and you can search all the images that you've made. Text to image, image to image, text to image grids. So let's look at image to image. These are some textures and images I made in my advanced Photopia tutorial. If you watched it, you might recognize these wings that I took off a duck to put on my model. And when you get in here, you're met with this interface. You can see your text to image, your image to image, your extras, as well as some pictures that you can actually add to your favorites, which is pretty cool. And then you could also go to text to image. Then you could type in a keyword like rusty, for example. And then you could click on one of the pictures. Then you can see all the information about that picture. And here you can see the prompt that was used, the steps, the CFG scale, the denoise strength, even the model that I use, all the way down to the seed for this picture and the file name where it exists. So something really cool I can do is actually send this to text to image, image to image, or out paint, in paint, control net. You can send this everywhere. And you could also open the folder that it exists in right here. So check this out. You can actually click on text to image. And now you'll see that the exact prompt that I use is now here. So if I click on this, it's going to make me that same image. So I'm going to click on it right now. And there you go. It created the same exact image. That's pretty neat. I really like this extension because it's convenient and it's something that Stable Diffusion should have had by default. It really sucks to go into the folder structures and try to look for something. It takes forever. I love that you could just type something like desert here in the prompt and image to image tab and then you get all the pictures that use desert in the prompt. And then you could just click on it. You'll see what you did to generate it and it's pretty awesome. So this is definitely a must install. To install this is pretty simple. You go to the extensions tab right here then you click on available. Then you click on load from. Now I have the installed filter on check mark because I already have it. So I want to show it to you guys, but you should have this check mark. So I'm going to type in image browser or image brow and you could see it pops up right away. I'm not sure what this infinite image browser is, but this is the one right here that says image browser provides an interface to browse created images in the web browser. And then all you have to do is click on the installed button. I already have mine installed, so I can't click on it, but you would just click install right here and it should take about five seconds to install. And as always, you have to go to the installed sub tab up here, then click on check for updates and then click on apply and restart. And just for good practice, I would always reboot your stable diffusion web UI. The next one is system info and this one is a must have for me and it's an amazing quality of life add on because I do larger jobs and I want to know the status of things. Also, if you're running this remotely via a server, you'll still have the ability to see what's going on. So this is very important. Cool. So now I'm going to go back up here and just click generate. And while that's generating, let's take a look at system info here. As you can see, it's showing the stats about like what step it's in, what job it's in. And uh, see here, it says seven out of 10. And it has a bunch of system info as well as your memory usage. Cool. Almost done there. 10 of 10. So now I can come back. You can always read this in your command prompt, but unless you're from the matrix, I mean, it, have fun with that. Great outfit. How much to close cost in the matrix? <laughs> To install this extension, it's super easy. Just go ahead and go to the extensions tab then click on the available sub tab. Now click on load from. Now just type in system info right here in search. And for me, it's the only one that pops up. I'm going to go ahead and click on install. All right. So now it says it's installed, but you always have to go to the installed sub tab, then check for updates and always apply and restart. Then after the refresh, you'll have a tab here that says system info. Just a heads up. You're going to want to close your web UI user command prompt and restart it as I had a lot of problems. So uh, to avoid all those problems just go ahead and close this and reopen it the next tool is an in-painting tool called sd web ui in paint anything and it pretty much works like segment anything and if you don't know about the segment anything model it's basically called sam it's from meta ai but the cool thing about this what makes it special is that it has the ability to detect objects so you can just click on them and then it's able to recognize what that object is and you could actually do things with it you could either change like this wood you could change it to marble or you can change these fruits into something else like i don't know like you could make these bananas into quarters but that's essentially what this tool does. All right, so let's test out a picture real quick. So I'm going to drop a picture in here. I'm going to use this picture right here. Um, there might be a little too much going on. So this is going to be a rough test here. 
Well, let's try it out. So just make sure you upload that input image here. Then you can click on edit to change the canvas size and then click on run segment anything. And keep in mind, you want a smaller image to work on. You don't want something like 3000 by 2000. They're gonna be here for five minutes for each generation. Let's go ahead and look at this here. So it basically created a segmentation map, but we now have the ability to one click on something and just kind of create a mask on it. So let me create a bigger mask so you can see it. So I'm just gonna just put a dot right there where her hair is, and then I could create the mask. And then I could just type something here in the prompt. I could put like fiery. I'll put fiery red hair on fire and then I'm going to click on run in painting and see what it gives us. As you can see, the tips here are kind of not selected. That's something you would be able to get with picks to picks, which is another extension that does something similar, but you'll be creating the mask instead of it being able to detect separate items in your drawing. So that looks pretty nice actually. So, but when you download it and zoom in, you're going to see here that on the tips, it didn't get it very well, but I think actually that's acceptable, but pretty amazing. There's so much more functionality to this and there's a lot more to say about it, but this is just a preview showing you that this tool exists and that you can go get this extension right now. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing you need to do is go to my video description then you'll find a GitHub link for Umuno Sachi and it's gonna be SD Web UI in Paint Anything. And this is pretty much the SAM model. It doesn't have all the functionality. It can't actually determine the property of the items it detects, but it can detect items and it can actually change those items. So you can change a jar of pickles into a jar of plums or something like that. So this isn't on the Stable Diffusion extension repository just yet. So you're gonna have to go to this site and then click on the code button right here. So the green button up top, when that opens up, you'll have the link here that you can copy. And we're gonna need this URL for the installation. Now head on over to Stable Diffusion in the extensions tab, the sub tab, install from URL, then paste the extension in the URL for extensions Git repository. So I'm gonna press Control V and paste that in there and then click on install. Since I already have this installed, there's an assertion error here, but yours will say installed and it'll tell you what directory it installed it to. After you get the confirmation that it's installed, click on the sub tab installed, then click on check for updates, then click on apply and restart. And it's always a good idea to restart your web UI. All right, the next great extension is Canvas Zoom. And I use this one a lot. It's one of those extensions that you don't even know you need it until you start using it. And you're like, I use this a lot. So this extension is a must for me because I do some out painting with my in painting. I'm gonna show you why it's so important. So I'm gonna take this image right here from my image browser, and then I'm gonna send it to image to image. And I'm just gonna render it so I can get some black bars on the edges so I can do some out painting with my in painting. I did a whole video on this. And if you wanna check it out, it's in the video description. Now I create an image with black bars around the side. And by default, you only have the color black, but Canvas Zoom actually gives you the ability to use other colors as well as other things like a transparency mask and things like that. I never actually used that one, but I need the color green here. So you can actually hold control and scroll up to make it bigger. And you could press X to zoom into your picture. Then you can hold shift to zoom all the way in. And this one's pretty blurry. But let me paint out on the side here and show you what I'm talking about when I say out painting with in painting. So the ability to have colors is pretty neat because otherwise you would just have black and you wouldn't see what you were doing. So now I can actually just go ahead and press S again to minimize the picture. Now I'm going to raise the denoising strength all the way up to seven and generate. All right, so the in painting came out pretty nice, but it left us an extra foot, which is a little weird, but let me show you how close you can actually zoom up into this. So press S and it'll bring out the picture. Then you can hold shift. And you can zoom all the way in. Now I'm going to hold control and scroll up and make it about the size of the shoe. And there we go. We're so zoomed in, we can actually outpaint this really tiny rock. All right, so press S again a couple times until you get back to the normal in painting and then just go ahead and click generate. And there's our final product. Then it's a little bit blurry, but her legs are longer now and we got rid of that foot. Yeah, that works. That works. Definitely got to fix her hands and the blurriness on her face, but that's beyond the scope of what this is, which is showing you the extension. One cool thing you can do is you can go to extensions and you could click on installed. Then you could just click on this link URL here adjacent to Canvas Zoom and it'll bring you directly to the site where they'll have a video that will show you all the features of this tool. Okay, so let's take a look at the install and it's just a normal standard install. Go to your extensions tab, click on available click on load from, then type canvas zoom in the search bar. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna uncheck installed here so you can actually see it. And here you see canvas zoom. So you would just click install here, then click on the installed sub tab and check for updates and then apply and restart. And to avoid any issues, just go ahead and close your web UI user command prompt and just open it up again, start fresh. Yo!
Next up on the list is Aspect Ratio Helper and Aspect Ratio Selector. They're so easy to install, so why not get both of them? Once you install them, you'll have access to them in text to image and image to image. It's going to make your life a lot more easier when choosing something like a portrait versus a landscape. It's going to automatically do it for you. First, let's take a look at Aspect Ratio Selector. After you install it, when you scroll down here, you'll have these buttons right here. So you can actually select different ratios, 3 by 2 one by one, four by three, 16 by nine. Now this is based on the current resolution that you have up here. So if I put this right here and then click 16 by nine, it's going to give me 1138 by 640, which is a 16 by nine of what you currently see here. That's not the actual resolution of this image. And if you want, you could do the auto detect size from image to image. Now, I'm not sure where I got this button, but I'm pretty sure it was from control net, but I'm having trouble trying to figure out where everything is. But if I click this, it's going to automatically select my actual resolution. That's a totally different extension. So don't get confused there. So this button right here does the same exact things. If you click on this button here, it'll give you the current resolution of what your image actually is. So I'm going to click on that. Now you see it's a 3840 by the 2176. Then once you got what you want, just click apply. Now aspect ratio helper is a little different and it's actually the one that I prefer. First of all, it's at the top here. So you can actually see your image when you're working on this. All you have to do to use this is click on this little button here right next to your resolution. And then you can lock the aspect ratio to whatever you want here. So if I want it 16 by nine and I move this, it's going to auto adjust to a 16 by nine resolution. As you can see here, it went from 1200 to 672. No matter which way I move it, it's going to try to give me a 16 by nine. Same thing if you put it three by two, it's going to do the same thing. This one has less functionality, but it's more minimal and I like it. So installing this is pretty easy and it's just like the ones we installed earlier. There's a theme here. You click on available, you click on load from, then you go in the search box down here and you type in aspect. Now I have to uncheck this. You guys won't be doing this. This is only because I already have it installed. And there it is. Aspect ratio helper and aspect ratio selector. Just click on install to install them. But of course, once you're done with that, go into the installed sub tab then click on check for updates and then apply and restart UI. The next one's going to improve your prompting game big time. And this is Boru Tag Auto Completion Prompting. And it's going to actually give you suggestions for a prompt. And it's going to also rate things and give you which one is the coolest thing to actually pick. So let's take a look at this. Now, when you start typing something here into the prompt, you're going to see a list of things that you can actually choose from that are sorted and rated by popularity. So if I type in Cyberpunk Machine Parts, they'll actually just put that tag in there for me. Now let's type in cinematic and see what it gives us. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Maybe that one's a good one to use. So it's going to give you a bunch of suggestions that are popular. Then you can type in stuff like master. You can see masterpiece, which is a very popular quality tag. For stable diffusion, everybody uses this. Normally you would actually put this at the front of the prompt and then you would add this, 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 then paste that and then add more columns. And this gives it more strength. Another way you can do this is actually put 1.5 to make it a little bit stronger and delete the delete the columns. The columns actually represent 10%. So every time you add a closed column, it's 10%. It's 10% extra of 100. So one column will be 110% and then 120, 130, and so on. Right now at colon 1.5, it's actually going to be 150%. So that's actually quicker. Just keep in mind that Deep Boro is an anime site, so it's going to be more anime based. So I put in fantasy and it gave me Final Fantasy it was like the number one topic here. But it doesn't hurt to have some suggestions, right? I don't know about that suggestion. One girl's one girl. That's like the number one. Four million, four point one million. <laughs> what does that mean? Let me let me try that. Okay, not bad. Wow, not bad. That's from two words. To install this tool, it's really easy. Just like the ones before it, you go to the extensions tab, the available sub tab, you click load from, and then you just click on install right here. Then as always, go to the installed sub tab, click on check for updates, and then click apply and restart. And that's it. You installed yet another extension. Next, we have SD Dynamic Prompts. This is also known as Wildcards, and this is pretty much like Mid Journey's variation feature, but on steroids. And the coolest thing about it is you can actually define the variation. So you can give it a list of all the different types of variations that you want it to do. And it's super easy just to print out 100 different pictures with 100 different variations, all based on the parameters that you gave it. I know it sounds complicated, but I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. There was actually someone who did a thousand prompts. He pretty much just gave it a wild card and increased their batch size and then walked away. This is a pretty powerful tool and you should check out the SD Dynamic Prompt site. I'll leave it in my video description and you can see all the different features that it has. All right, so real quickly, I'm going to teach you how to install install custom wildcards. And so the first one is this mad JB site. So there's just, he has a collection here, a repository. So you can just triple click at the link here at the bottom of this site. It'll be in my 
video description so you can go check that out. And there's two more other repositories here if you want to just do the same exact process we're doing now. So go ahead and copy this right here. Then go to this folder right here, Stable Diffusion Web UI Extensions SD Dynamic Prompts. So I'm in Stable Diffusion, going into Extensions. Then here's my SD Dynamic Prompts. And then this is where I would actually go into the address bar up here and type in CMD and press Enter. CMD, press Enter. And now Command Prompt will pop up and then you'll just paste what you copied in there. Keep in mind that git clone is already here, so you don't have to type it in. And if you do, you're going to get an error. And it's also important to mention on the site, it has a link to git if you don't have it, but you should have git if you installed Stable Diffusion. Go into SD wildcards, go into the wildcards folder and just copy everything in there and then go back up two folders back to the SD dynamic prompts folder Then click on the wildcards folder and then just create a folder for Matt JB and paste everything inside. As you can see, I have a folder that says created by me and this is where I put my own custom notepad. Now everything you downloaded from Matt JB is going to be in here. So each one of these represents a list. You go in here and I click an actress. You can see there's a bunch of different actresses in here. Now going back into Stable Diffusion, you'll see Wildcards Manager. Then you choose the Matt JB and you'll see all the different options from the list that you downloaded from him. You'll see Fantasy Creature, Flower, all this stuff. And then the one we were looking at earlier was Actress, which is up here. And when you click on that, it's going to throw all that in here. Then all you have to do is triple click in here, and right click and copy it, and then just go ahead and put it in your prompt as you normally would right there. Now I'm going to create my own list. And what I did was I went into chat GPT and I typed in, give me the top 25 fantasy artists. And it gave me a list here, but you can't put it in with the numbers. So just ask chat GPT to remove the numbering. And then you could just copy and paste this stuff and then put it into your custom notepad. So in the SD dynamic prompts, wildcards folder in your stable diffusion extensions, I have this created by me folder. And then I put this artist fantasy notepad in here. It just has to be a notepad. There's nothing special about it. And you just paste everything in here. So it just has to be in this format, which is just word after word. And it could be phrase after phrase and just save it in there. I would recommend putting a category underscore a subcategory, or you can just go and name it. So I put artist underscore fantasy. So let's take a look at my custom wild card, which is right here created by me. And there's only one in there. So this is it right here. So I could just copy this. Then we're going to head on over to text to image and you could just drop that right here after whatever you typed and it's going to choose from those artists. One thing you want to do is increase the batch size so you can see multiple different styles of the artist. So you could compare. Let's check this one out. So it used different artists for each of these castles and it came out with different results, which is pretty cool. Now let's try generating something again. See what it gives us. All right, let me add NSFW. For some reason, there was a nude girl in um, something that said cinematic shot of castles. So it's one of the artists must have been the one for Conan. For the next one, I'm going to use the aspect ratio helper that we installed, and I'm going to do a 16 by 9, which is pretty much a landscape shot. And then I'm going to click on generate. This is like Mid Journey's variation button, but on steroids, because you can actually put as many artists as you want in there. Then you can increase the batch count as well as the batch size. Let me try 10 and I'm going to click generate. So that should give me 80 pictures of castles under the style of all the different artists that we put on that wild card, which is pretty amazing. So this is a good time to look at system info. And you can see here it's on job three out of 10 and it shows the batches as well, as well as a bunch of other information over here about my memory and things that are going on with my computer. By the way, that Matt JB, the one that you downloaded, actually has a lot of different, you know, body shapes, civilization. There's just a complete list of all this different stuff. There's even this stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's up there, buddy? But yeah, there's multiple lists um, that I'm going to put in my video description that you can grab from. But I suggest you just go to chat GPT and start creating a bunch of these lists. Perhaps put like art mediums, painting styles, like oil paintings and all that stuff. And you can get just a bunch of different styles with one click. There we go. 80 different pictures of castles and they all look pretty great. And if you want to look at these in more depth, then you can actually go into your image browser. See, we're using all of these extensions already. I find out that I always have to click on refresh to get it to show. but here you can see all the images that were just generated and you can go through all 80 pictures by going to next page, next page. And this is pretty amazing. So let me click on this one. I mean, that looks pretty nice. Then you can go back here. Let me click on this one. And this one's pretty nice. It's a little blurry, but we can definitely clean that up. Let's take a look at this one. This one looks pretty nice. It's like a castle in the middle of the ocean. But yeah, image browser is a great tool as well to look at this stuff. I mean, right here, I can see all my pictures. I would hate to have to go into my folders and try to look at these one by one. One, and here's the original pictures that I created. Alrighty, 
To install this tool, it's pretty much the same story. You go to the extensions tab with Stable Diffusion. You go to the available sub tab and click on the big orange load from button. And for my settings, you're going to notice again that install does not check mark for you. It needs to be check marked. Then type in dynamic in the search prompt. Then look for dynamic prompts and then click on the install button over here at the right. But once this is finished installing, just go ahead and click on the installed sub tab. Click on check for updates up here and then click on the big orange apply and restart UI. I would recommend that you restart your web UI for this one because it has a function to it. So definitely restart. Just a fun fact, you can actually right click on the generate button and click on generate forever. So you can make more than 80 pictures. You'll just keep making pictures till you actually stop this thing and click on cancel generate forever. It'll just keep going and going and going. Just be careful if you use this, you're, you're going to have memory issues. Let's put it that way. And also don't try to do a send interrupt. It's not really going to do the job. It's going to stop one job, but it's going to keep going. Going. So if you do generate forever, make sure you cancel generate forever to stop it. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you don't want all these extensions running at the same time. You're just going to have like 20, 30 tabs up here. And there might be conflicts between the extensions, which I'm only assuming. I don't know if there is any conflict. All you have to do to temporarily put them away is just uncheck them right here. And then that's it. Just click on apply and restart. And then you don't have to see them in here until you want to use them. But definitely check for updates regularly and apply and restart. And then if you want to completely delete the extension, go ahead and close your web UI by pressing the X here and then go into your stable diffusion folder inside extensions and just find the extension that you don't want anymore and just right click on it and delete it. Just make sure you're not deleting anything you want to keep, but there shouldn't be anything in here that you want to keep. All their outputs go to the output folder here in stable diffusions right here. But yeah, that's all I had. And those are some great extensions that you should install. And these are utilities. And I'm going to make another video soon for five more extensions but these are going to be more focused on tools that have a lot of capabilities and they're almost like their own application within stable diffusion these were utility based and they're very easy to install and there's no reason not to download these these are just improvements to quality of life and working in stable diffusion to make it easier for you the in pain app the wildcard generator the image browser all of those are pretty amazing canvas zoom all great tools Anyways, if you like this video or if you like this type of content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And it definitely helps me out. So keep an eye out for that new extensions video or you can just subscribe and you'll see it when it pops up. So I want to say thanks for watching and take it easy. Thanks for stopping by.